<laughs> so in that regard, uh, how do you say your name, sir? Michael? Michael Farbiash. Yeah, I got the Michael part. Okay. Uh, so along the line of terrorism, you know, it's kind of a different crime, still a crime, I guess. How would you, based on your experience, do the terrorists still want to kill us all? Senator, I, I don't have a broad, systematic answer to that question. Uh, I, I've continued to follow national security. Well, the ones you met, did they want to kill us all? <laughs> Senator, the ones I met were deeply motivated ideologically, people I met. To do what? To kill Americans, Senator. Okay. So do you believe that anything's changed since 2014, that the terrorist organizations that you're familiar with, one of their primary desires is to attack America? Do you believe that still to be the case? Senator, I do believe that still is the case. Um, so we need to keep our guard up, right? I agree with that, Senator. Okay. Narcotics. Um, is there an intersection between international drug trafficking and terrorism? Senator, I believe there was. During the years I worked as a prosecutor, I saw that firsthand. Yeah. So, like, uh, do you ever see any cases of drug cartels, say, in Mexico, working with terrorists? I, I did, Senator, and I could give you an example uh, during the time I was an assistant United States attorney, one of the cases I worked very intensely on and that I oversaw was a plot by the IRGC in Iran right. uh, to recruit a member of a drug cartel to kill the Saudi ambassador to the United States. It was an urgent and important case, uh, and it was a case that resulted in a conviction, but I think it exemplifies, Senator, what you're speaking about, which is that nexus between narcotics sometimes and terrorist practices sometimes. And in your experience in this area, ungoverned spaces is sort of a, a great deal for terrorist and narcotic organizations, right? When there's no law and order? Senator, that was my experience. In addition to prosecuting terrorists, there was also prosecutions that I oversaw of narcotics traffickers from Afghanistan, from Colombia, who operated as warlords, who controlled territories, who controlled men and weapons, and were very dangerous. Do you think there's the equivalent of warlords in Mexico? Senator, I, I, I don't know that sitting here today. During the time that I, I worked on prosecutions, there were men who controlled space in Mexico, including a uh, person who goes by the name Chapo, who, who uh, the unit I supervised indicted. Did you ever deal with any cases involving fentanyl? Senator, I did not. Are you familiar with the drug fentanyl? I, I am, Senator. Okay. Do you understand the deadly nature of it? I do. In my current capacity, Senator, I'm the general counsel of a large public agency, the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey. We have a police force of about 2,000 people, and one of our duties, one of the police's duties, is to police the bus terminal in New York City. It's the busiest bus terminal in the United States, second busiest in the world, and I know firsthand from the work that they do how deadly fentanyl is. Okay. Well, you seem to be very qualified, and all of you, to be honest with you. Uh, 